everybody! I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing a fundal height on a pregnant patient. So the first things are the things we always do. Washing our hands, providing patient privacy, and then verifying our patient using two identifiers, name and date of birth. Now we're going to explain to our patient just exactly what we're going to do. Hi, Mrs. Johnson. I'm Andrea. I'm going to be your nurse today. How are you feeling? I'm feeling fine. Okay, that's great. I'm just here to do a fundal height assessment on you. Is that okay? It won't hurt and it won't take very long. Yes, that's fine. All right, let's do it. Now we're going to be assessing mom's fundal height. When we do this, we want to make sure that her bladder has been emptied and that she's not quite all the way flat on the bed. If you want to put her flat, make sure that you put like a little wedge or something underneath of her hip because she is at risk for supine hypotensive syndrome. So we're going to expose her belly. We're going to take using the centimeter side, centimeters, we're going to start at the symphysis pubis and we're going to feel where mom's fundus is. It's about right here. And then we're going to measure. So from the symphysis pubis to the top of the fundus. And on this woman, it is about 25 centimeters. So that correlates to about 25 weeks. There are a couple of things I wanted to make sure that I touched on in this video. The first of which is, why are we doing this? To assess baby's growth and development. That's the whole point. Around week 24 is when we see things start to match up. So what do I mean by match up? I mean, if mom is 24 weeks along and we measure her, we should get 24 centimeters. So they match. Now, there is a normal variance of plus or minus two and that's okay. And what do I mean by that? If mom is 24 and we measure her and get 22, or we measure her and we get 26, those are okay because those are both within two of each other, right? They're both within two centimeters of what we expected, so that's okay. This is less accurate in some women. So women who have a higher BMI, so a BMI greater than 30, or women who have fibroids. And then you can also do something called uh, measuring big or measuring small. You might have heard of that. Maybe a pregnant woman you know has said that to you. Oh, I measured big or oh, I measured small. What does that mean? So it means that when we measured her, we got a number that was more than two off. So she's 24 weeks and we measured her and we got 28 weeks, 30 weeks, something like that, something way bigger than two off. So a reason this could be could be macrosomia, so a bigger than normal baby. Multiples, so she's pregnant with more than one baby, twins, triplets, and so forth. Or she has something called polyhydramnios, which is an excess of amniotic fluid. So this would be a reason why you'd be measuring bigger. A reason why you'd be measuring smaller, so she's 24 weeks and we measure her and get 19, okay? The reason that would be would be intrauterine growth restriction, so baby is much smaller than it should be, and lots of things can contribute to intrauterine growth restriction. It could be mom has a chronic disease like hypertension or diabetes, it could be mom's a smoker, lots and lots of things could cause IUGR. Or the opposite of polyhydramnios is oligohydramnios, which is you don't have a lot of amniotic fluid, you have a much smaller amount than normal. So these are just some things I wanted to point out and make sure I put in this video as a quick review and the whole reason we're doing this in the first place. So that was my video on measuring a fundal height. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. If not, I'll see you on the next one.